In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the solubility of solutes. So the question then becomes, what makes one solute soluble in one solvent and not in another? And it really comes down to whether or not they are alike or they're different. And what we mean by are they alike or they're different? Well, it really comes down to their polarity. Are the molecules in the solute and the solvent polar or nonpolar? If they're both like, if they're both polar or both nonpolar, then they tend to be soluble. But if one is polar and the other one is nonpolar, doesn't matter which one, then they tend to be insoluble. I say tend to be because there's some exceptions, so we'll look at one exception for that. But let's, uh, let's do an example here. Let's take carbon tetrachloride and benzene. They're both nonpolar and they both have similar boiling points, which means they act and behave very similar in a lot of ways and they completely dissolve very easily and so therefore they're called miscible. That's a term that we use for the fact that they can completely dissolve. On the other hand, we have, for example, um, what do we have here? Eth uh, ethyl alcohol and water and they are both polar and again, since they're both polar, they can completely dissolve and also they are miscible. So here we have a case where we have two nonpolar and two polar constituents and yes, they both end up uh, dissolving. But what happens now when we take carbon tetrachloride and water? The forces between them are induced polar. So here we have one polar molecule and a nonpolar molecule. So the only attractive force between them is the induction of the water to the tet to carbon tetrachloride to induce a little bit of polarity in this molecule. So the forces between them are fairly weak. Those weak forces are competing against the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules, which are much stronger, and the dissoci dissociation forces that, that try to pull the carbon and the chlorine atoms apart, which require a lot of force to do that. And so before, because of that, the weak induced polar forces are not sufficient to overcome the hydrogen bond and the forces that keep the carbon tetrachloride together. And so therefore, they tend not to dissolve, and therefore we call them immiscible. So there are some exceptions. Let me show you in just a moment why. Let's take acetic acid and water. Now they're both polar molecules. Uh, acetic acid will shed one of the hydrogens, become an, an ion, and there'll be a lot of attraction between acetic acid and water. And so there's a lot of strong bonding there. And yes, they do dissolve. They're both polar. But you can also take acetic acid and mix it with carbon tetrachloride or mix it with benzene, where these are nonpolar molecules and, and acetic acid is polar. And again, uh, they will dissolve. And now the big question is why? Something is different here. You have a polar molecule, a nonpolar molecule, and, uh, and they tend to dissolve. What is going on? And it turns out that acetic acid has an interesting property. It can form what we call dimers. And let me show you what that looks like. So if you draw an acetic acid molecule, you have the CH3 right here. Like that. And then you, you have a bond with uh, another carbon and that carbon bonds with an oxygen and a hydrogen and the other side with one single oxygen like that. And so you can have another acetic acid molecule like that on the other side. So let me draw it over here. So we can have the carbon with the three hydrogens like so. And then we have another carbon bond right there. And this carbon can form a bond with an oxygen and a double bond. Uh, actually, yeah, that's right. No, it's going to be the other way around. This is going to be a double bond. Sorry, made a mistake. There's a single bond. There's a double bond. So that's a double bond. This is going to be a single bond because this oxygen has another hydrogen to bond with like that. Now notice what can happen. We can get a hydrogen bond connecting this hydrogen with this oxygen. We can get a hydrogen bond here connecting this oxygen with this hydrogen. And now all of a sudden, what it was in the beginning, a polar molecule now gets kind of canceled out by forming a single dimer where two acetic acid molecules bond together, and as a whole now, this becomes very symmetric and nonpolar. So now, when they form like this, they become nonpolar, and they can then go in and mix with carbon tetrachloride or with benzene, and then they behave like a nonpolar molecule, and they can dissolve one another. So there you have an example where, because of some unusual properties of acetic acid, a polar molecule can, be, um, can dissolve a nonpolar molecule and so you can see the general rules are there. Uh, generally, we'd say if they're both polar, both nonpolar, your chances are pretty good that they will dissolve one another. If one is polar and the other one is nonpolar, there's a chance 
for some reason it may happen, but very likely that it will not. So those are the general rules that you want to follow as you start looking at why some things will dissolve and why some things will not dissolve. So based on these properties, you're along, you, you, you're, have a good inroad into understanding the properties involving the solubility of these solvents and these solutes.